What is up, guys? We're doubles back here with a brand new video. Today, a massive thing has happened. Actually, it happened yesterday. They finally made it to where shamans, priests, and even rogues can queue as tanks and play their new specs out in all of its glory. It's a really big deal, and it happened in a crazy way. We're gonna also play all those tanks today on the Dust Cave and Vanilla Plus server. So, hope you guys enjoy, and let's jump right in. Okay, guys, listen up. I'm pretty happy right now. I just got home after spending some time with family, but right before all this happened, I get a message on Discord, and listen, actually, let's just go to the Discord, and let me explain to you guys what's going down. Okay, so I'm on Discord right now, which if you don't know, by the way, Discord's basically the place you have to be now when it comes to video game stuff. It's not that deep. It's just like I check announcements on here. I stay up to date with all these servers and stuff, and of course, you could join my community for the same concept, but here's what happened. So earlier today, I woke up to some pings, and I thought, okay, I get pings sometimes. That's fine. That's the point of the the Discord. I believe it was in the Dust Haven section down here. So if we go up a bit, you'll see these pings. Let's see, where are they? Aha! This is good! Lawbringer, and he says, McDoubles, in your first Shaman video, you said it's a core edit to be able to tank as the other classes, which would be false, according to him. Now, and whenever I see stuff like this, I think, god damn it, because it's not me. I'm getting info from people who are supposed to have the knowledge, and I don't like the idea of giving false info out, even when it really is not that deep, like something like this. If they can't do it, they can't do it, but I read on. The fix is simple. He says, what? I'm thinking, who are you to have the fix when these people are telling me it's the hardest thing in the world? And he says, it's a change to the code in the client, so anyone can do it in five minutes. And that's a big thing to say when the people that I'm talking to are making it seem like it's the hardest thing of all time. Trust me, there's a lot of insider talks I'm not going to say anything about where it seems to me like it's the hardest thing to do. He says, I have even made a guide on how to do it. What the hell? I wish you could take this up with Knox so he could either make the changes to the client they have uploaded or let me share my guide on their discord so people could freely edit their own clients. And I'm like, what? Anyway, to make a super long story short, I go down, where's Nox? I go down to Nox right here, and uh, I say, hey, could this guy be right? And if so, are you willing to talk to him? And he says, I've written him a message. I am very curious to see what he has come up with. Two hours later, not even, he says to me, all right, it seems he was right. Shamans, demon hunters, and priests can now queue his tanks. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, where's the Tinker Tank? Well, I talked to Nox about this, and they're actually thinking about reworking Tinker Tank and just making it a different DPS spec or a you know, maybe a big cooldown when you go into robot form because they think they have too many tank specs. I'll be real, I agree. And that leads me back to this. We are on Not Prepared, the demon hunter I made a really long time ago. Eleonora here says, when will I be prepared? Perhaps today is the day. What I would like to do in celebration of this absolutely massive, pivotal change is, I'm on a rogue right now, by the way, because that's what a DH is based off of, and I can queue tank. I'm gonna start queuing for tank. We're just gonna have some fun. It's gonna remind me of Ascension in that regard because I can actually queue tank with interesting, unique, and new stuff. And uh, you know what? I think we're just gonna try it all. Every single brand new class that can tank, we've got them at max level. Let's just jump into some dungeons, actually queue up, see how it feels, and uh, you guys can see every brand new tank in action. And so we were off. And listen, I queued up with my Demon Hunter first, and I just wanna go over what the Demon Hunter even has going for them real quick, and I'll show you the gameplay of my very first dungeon while we talk about it and go through some of the highlights and possibly even the downsides of Demon Hunter tank. Spoiler alert though, there really aren't any for this one. So if you look right here, you can see Demon Hunter abilities, and you can check out my first video for a rundown of the general playstyle because it does stay the same when you're in the tank form. The big difference, though, is that we are going to be using demonic tattoos. This is what allows you to tank, and this is the only thing that's really pivotal enough to talk about right now. So here's what it says. I take 14% less magical damage, 9% more physical damage, I get 24% more health, doubled armor, 5% more dodge baseline, I get 110% more threat, my chance to get crit for bosses, right, reduced by 6%, damage taken below 35% of my health is reduced by 10%, and chaos strike, my main spammable, right, now heals me for a small amount. Very, very good. The basic playstyle, as you guys can see here, is going to revolve entirely around things like Immolation Aura with the Fell Breath coming right after that. That's going to be the massive AoE. Now, the only real downside you'll notice to the DH is that everything is on a hefty cooldown. So in my opinion, really the skill with DH is going to come down to understanding that you need to pull relatively big outside of maybe an 
M plus scenario where you know that even if you only pull three or four guys, you know that that fight's going to take long enough to where you're going to have your cooldowns again. So that's something around 30 seconds before you can MO Aura and go for more fell breaths a little bit after that and stuff like that. You know, if you don't have any of that, you don't have any threat for dungeons because you don't have any AoE. So you have to make sure you play around Immolation Aura and fell breath or you will feel like, huh, it's like not as easy as playing just Pally or just spamming Thunderclap or spamming Swipe. But when you start playing around the cooldowns, DH becomes literally, if not the, it's at least one of the strongest tank classes currently in the game right now. And really, it's not even just because of its mitigation, although that's quite good. But what I like the most about DH tank is that, as you can see, my damage is way too high for a tank way too high. Um, I am dominating everything. There were points where I was literally soloing things myself because it just wasn't that deep. So there is something powerful about DH tank. If you like to play tanks, but you don't like to feel like you're a wimp, right? You really want to get in there and start smashing heads, but you also want to be the guy that takes all the damage and protects your team. Really, DH is the way to go. You know, you have a taunt the way you need. You have multiple ways to uh, close gaps very, very easily. You'll notice that in my run as well. I'm constantly utilizing the double jump, you know, forward disengage feature. I'm fell charging consistently. One thing I really think you shouldn't sleep on is the Chaos Nova, which works about the same as you would think it works on retail. It's an AoE stun, and it's extremely powerful. And of course, when you go for those boss fights, or when you think you're going to take heavy damage, you've always got that metamorphosis waiting for you on the sidelines, right, to be popped. And when you have metamorphosis up, it's pretty insane, actually. I can show you guys right here. You transform into a demon for 20 seconds. Your armor goes up by 150%, damage by 15%. You once again get a chance to reduce your chance to be crit by 6%, although I think it's irrelevant when you're in the tank spec, right? But more importantly, it reduces the duration of stun and snare effects, and Chaos Strike and Blade Dance are greatly empowered, and that's going to be a big deal. Not only that, when you're in Metamorphosis and you use Blade Dance, you get 15% more dodge, and that's a huge deal, because now just popping the meta is going to automatically mean you are going to take way less damage, not just because of the armor when you do take a hit, but because of the dodge, so you can avoid taking a hit in totality. So I really enjoyed playing with the Demon Hunter. I thought it was ridiculously strong, and uh, so far, I'll tell you at the end what my favorites were, but this is one of them, well, I guess obviously, right? But you'll see the rankings. DH is extremely powerful, though, and extremely fun to play, and I'll show you the spec as well right now. So here's the spec we went with. It's really simple, actually, to build these DH and these new specs because they utilize, in a very creative way, the original class's talents, and there's just some extra stuff here and there. So I've got, like, dual-wield spec, pretty much irrelevant. Let's get to the things that matter. 6% parry from deflection, 5% hit from precision, Reduced cooldown on the evasion, which is usable even as DH. We get another 6% dodge here. Currently, my dodge, if we go to my defense stats on DH, is at 32.44% or almost 50% with meta up. And I'm not even geared, dude. I am literally in level 37 gear. I'm literally wearing trip runner dungarees. That is low. Now, I've got my, you know, normal DH stuff you get, like my Illidari blindfold, my glaives. I got lucky on a plus four twine covered bow. But for the most part, I am not geared to be a tank, you could get this dodge up if I had to guess over 50% baseline for sure. And that really says something because you're going to be more like a bear tank in that regard, constantly bobbing and weaving through the hits as you, in this case at least, do massive damage in AoE all along the way. Again, I do think it's a super strong class. I don't think it's as face roll as you might think at first glance, although I do think once you begin to master the cooldown usage, you will start to feel like a god, so take that for what you will. Now we move on down. Your glaives do count as swords, so we take hack and slash for an extra attack. More importantly, though we have the expertise, we get some reduced stun and fear effects on us. That's actually really good for vanilla dungeons, because the only way I've seen this on Ascension 2, that they can really make vanilla dungeons hard, is if they take those traditional mechanics, like stun, fear, incapacitate, root, silence, and they just hammer you with it and make you play around it, force you to play around it. So actually, you'll see this with the monk as well in their regard. Uh, stuff like this is really good all of a sudden, plus 30% is just good in general. I feel like that's been buffed, maybe I'm wrong. Adrenaline rushes in here with the blade flurry by the way, but one thing you really have to keep in mind is that these cannot be used while you're in meta. So you can see my order is one, two, three, right? Because if I'm in meta first and I pop it, it takes me out. And that's depressing when you make that mistake. So I just have it in order here. Shift one, shift two, shift three. I know I can pop it in this order and I'll be okay. Uh, you know, we get a little bit of extra advantage here with unfair advantage. When I dodge an attack, I strike back. That's just good for more aggro. Everything else is not really helping me, by the way, in terms of uh, tanking. It's just giving me more damage, which I guess is fine for threat. But I've got the killing spree as well, and that's usable as a DH. And that's what I'd personally go for. To me, the most pivotal thing, once again, on the DH, guys, is just the fact that you can pull so much and you should pull so much 
because you benefit from utilizing those cooldowns to their full effectiveness. Run in there, guys. Pop the Immolation Aura and then get everybody on you. They're automatically on you, by the way, at that point. Then go for the Fell Breath. At that point, you can't lose aggro and you're in first place DPS, as you can see. You could pop the Blade Dance if the Metamorphosis is up or maybe just pop it in general. Start spamming the Chaos Strikes to build stacks of Fury and also heal yourself for a little bit. Taunt the occasional guy off. I was using Glaive Throw, by the way, as well when I was playing tank more than I did as a DPS. And the Glaive Throw was especially good because as you can see based on the tooltip right here, it will actually do more threat when you're in tank stance and it's really no joke on a nine second cooldown. It's actually one of the lowest cooldowns you have outside of the Chaos Strike itself because it has none, right? And so I actually think this is very pivotal and you should be expecting to use this a lot more than you expected to use it when you played the DPS variant. I really do think it's broken, bro. Um, look at this freaking evasion cooldown. Two minutes and you get 100% dodge chance when you have good gear, basically. Think about that. I'm 82% but if I had real gear on, it would be 100% dodge for 15 seconds. That is insane, at least for melee stuff, right? It reduces the chance of range attacks by 25%. You could almost get that to 100% too, but most bosses are probably melee, so it's kind of, you know, pointless. But the class is nutty, and I do highly recommend it. And uh, so what I want to do now, though, is let's jump to another one. And here comes my tried and true, my friends, the Scarlet Monk, the Melee Priest. A class I enjoyed so much that I made like four videos on it, and that says something for me, to be honest with you, because I'm constantly moving on to new things. I really, really love this class, and the tank class, just like the DH in this regard, is not that different from the DPS version. Instead, you're just going to slap on a tank stance, get a bunch of tanky aspects to you right and how you play, and then you're just going to roll with it and go straight into the dungeon, and that's exactly what I did. If you don't remember, Scarlet Monk is a very unique class in and of itself. It's a fire-based, literal based off the Scarlet Monastery Monk type of class, utilizing things like Firestorm Kick for massive AoE damage, taking your fists and putting them on fire, calling it Burning Fist, smacking people and everybody catches on fire around you, turning your fist into stone, doing big damage as a result of that, and then maybe thrash kicking and piercing jabbing when you're not doing all that jazz, and trying your best, in this regard now, to hold aggro in the process, which by the way, doesn't seem to be that hard. So here's my guy right now, and I I really do love this guy a lot, I'm not gonna lie. But what I wanna point out is the tank stance. So you can see it right here, Teachings of the Monastery tank. So here's what basically goes down. Interestingly enough, it increases your attack speed by a lot, your health by 30%, your armor by 60%, reduces your chance to be crit by 6%, threat goes up once again by 110%, you get 5% base movement speed, damage taken below 35% health is reduced by 15% on this guy, you get massively increased parry rating, your overall damage taken is reduced by 9%, and you also gain the ability to dual wield, which I didn't try, I tried the staff still, but I could see how that could be good. You lose the ability to use all your priest abilities outside of some tanky ones like Inner Fire, Divine Spirit, Power Word Shield, Fortitude, Resurrection, Cure Disease, and Dispel Magic. And not only that, but just to be thematic, right? Nox said, hey, Power Word Shield, 30% stronger. Start popping it on yourself. Now, just like most things, uh, priests don't go well, both the DPS and tank variant, with a healer priest because the shields overlap and actually the DPS and tank versions have better shields a lot of the times, interestingly enough. So you don't really want priest healers with these guys. Luckily, I didn't get one and I jumped straight into my very first dungeon and you guys can see it was pretty interesting. Uh, actually, it's super easy to play because thrash kick alone is enough to get threat. But what you really want to do with this guy is once again, like the DH, you want to round up a bunch of guys and go for that Firestorm Kick. When you're not doing that, I think you want to save that Burning Fist so that you can maintain aggro with it and kind of interchange between the two from pull to pull. It depends how long the pull takes. Once again, when you go into higher M+, on this server for sure, a lot of the pulls are smaller, although there are fewer mobs, and I do appreciate that, but even though the pulls are smaller, the fights take a bit still. The guys have high health, they often have interesting mechanics or something that's going to make you really, really get smacked, right? So you do have time to wait out that 20-second fight Firestorm kit cooldown. However, when you're in a normal dungeon and you really want to go fast, the best way to do things is what you're seeing right here. You just keep going. Now, one thing you will notice is that my team on this particular run didn't even realize that we were skipping. In other words, I come from a place like Ascension where I just assume that everybody knows the basics of vanilla dungeons at this point. And I understand that's kind of elitist at this point, and it's kind of hard to get out of that mindset actually when you've played for so long. But you know what? Nonetheless, people ended up following me and doing the skip that I did. But what ended up happening though is while I was waiting for them, I just solo the dungeon myself and that told me a lot because you have to understand the thing that monk does different from dh is that monk does less dps but monk has way more and i mean by multiple orders of magnitude more uh mitigation 
abilities or just in general, right? You have Power Word Shield for a shield. You have the brand new Inner Fire doing a lot more for you with way increased armor. You have that ability, it's called like Fortifying Resolve and it gives you like 15% more health and you know, a little bit more damage reduction or something like that for a decent amount of time. You have all these different cooldowns, Pain Suppression on yourself, 45 or 40% reduced damage taken. That's not a joke, right? So many little things. Whenever you Power Word Shield yourself with the Monk, you get a lesser Pain Suppression as well. It's like 10% reduced damage taken. So you have all of these things that you can build up on yourself. You just don't take damage, but you do have fewer things to do in the DPS department. And that's where it really comes back to the DH, right? Where I said, what you want to do is manage those cooldowns pull to pull. If you can do that, you'll see yourself being extremely effective with the priest. And one thing I'll point out right now, but we'll get more into at the end of the video, I'm sure, is that I like that these guys are not just the exact same tanks that we're used to. They have a very unique playstyle that requires your brain to be functioning just a little bit more. Uh, and once it does, it then actually becomes, interestingly enough, extremely easy to play. But you do have to start off with like a hold your horses mentality. Relax for a second. Look at what you've got. Think about it. Pop those cooldowns and pop them at the right time. Don't willy nilly spin the thunderclap and the consecration like you do on those classes don't spam me the swipe right you can spam the piercing jab you can go for the thrash but manage the burning fist and manage the firestorm kick and you will be rewarded for it and i've really enjoyed playing this for that reason alone it's just thematic and fun and cool and strong and you really can't beat that combo wow guys like halfway into this video and uh they're suffering another ddos attack and listen he's being very transparent about this i know i'm iffy on the ddos stuff because we if you go back to the whole history of private servers private server developers lie about this stuff a lot to cover up for incompetence. I'm not saying that's Nox though because there's too much transparency. He's being real about it. He's like, look, this is literally what the analytics of wherever I'm doing my stuff says to me is happening. And it's like during this peak time, boom, I get hit. And I just wonder who is out there with the incentive to hurt Dusthaven. I really think it's worth thinking about. I will admit because of my platform, I am scared to just, you know, think about it and, you know, me and you and we just like banter like, oh, is it this guy? Is it that one? But it is something to keep in mind. Why would a random player waste all their time to do that? I don't think it is. I wonder who has that incentive once again who would be trying to destroy the server like this because they are hitting it hard and they've been doing it consistently for quite a bit. Although there could be a little bit of incompetence in there as well. Regardless though, when it comes to the talents on my Scarlet Monk, check out these videos if you want that spec, but it's very, 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 very simple and also uh, really straightforward is really what I'm going for. And so there's not really much theory crafting there. It just builds itself. I can't quite show you right this second because I can't log back in. Now let's move on to the tank shaman. So the tank shaman is a doozy, I'm not gonna lie. What I mean by that is out of all the three classes that got brand new tank specs, the shaman tank feels like it has the most stuff that you have to actually click on and think about. You could almost say it's the most fleshed out, but I'd say it's a playstyle difference and less of that personally. And this is what I really mean. If you really take a look at what the shaman's got going on, you've got the following abilities that you really have to keep track of. You have the brand new lightning crash totem, which will replace magma totem on a six second cooldown, lightning damage to everybody, and you can use the fire Nova with it, which is another spell you have to think about. As you build your Maelstrom, you want to throw the Chain Lightnings out pretty consistently. Keep up the Lightning Shield. Go for the Stone Infusion as often as you can with the brand new animation, which is also doing damage and giving you a lot of threat and a lot of armor at the same time. You also want to spam the Storm Strike. Storm Strike applies a Crackling Thunder effect on the ground from Ascension in that regard, right? Uh, and it does damage to everybody and holds threat even more. And then if you have the time, you go for that Elemental Bulwark, which is just big single target damage that scales with your block. This is the only only tank in that regard that is using a shield out of all the brand new ones but it is using a shield and I think that's a big deal put more shield tanks in the game why not and shaman is the best candidate for it in my honest opinion now one thing to keep in mind this is using kind of a frost archetype right so you do use the frost brand weapon and you do get additional tank effects for doing it right I can't log back in to show you the talents unfortunately very big F right doing this and only have a couple hours before I want to put this video out but you have to take my word for it. There's a frosty theme, lots of armor, lots of mitigation. Now, another thing you can do, pop the stone claw totem and gain a big shield for yourself. And when you're not doing that, you can use the stone skin totem to just go with the mild armor to give yourself some armor effects, to give your whole team more armor. And so that's really good as well. One thing I did notice is that tank shaman doesn't really like using that one spell that pops all four totems down at once. And the reason is you can't currently use lightning crash totem with that. So if you do use that, that four totem drop down thing, you often replace your lightning
Lightning Crash Totem. And if you want to go for using the four totem drop down first into the Lightning Crash Totem, you are wasting mana, which one thing I have noticed is you really don't want to do. Mana is a bit of a problem with the Shaman. It's the only class I've played out of the three that we played tonight that is a problem. And I do think that this could be fixed over time. It could be a me thing, right? But uh, it's weird because do you really want to use Water Shield when it's so obvious based on the way you build this that Lightning Shield is the way to go? Regardless though, what I can say is after talking to some people that have played all of these specs, I have never met a Shaman that disliked Tank Shaman. It's very, very, very flavorful and extremely full of depth and I think that's the biggest thing. It's one of those classes where I played it a couple times and that's just not enough to really get the hang of it. Once you play it maybe a half dozen times or more you're gonna start really realizing that you are actually bloated actually with so much content with so many things to do to make yourself effective as a tank and I really do feel like I noticed it. However one thing you might be noticing is that this run was less clean than my other runs and that's because since it's less simple I was messing up quite a lot. I'll just be honest with you and uh, again mismanaging my mana so there's really going to take more time before I feel like I'm going to be a good tank shaman versus the other two however once again I think the skill cap is high and once you get there this is probably the best of the three that's my guess uh that, we'll talk more about it in a second though when I go over my rankings for the three but I do think shaman is probably the best of the new tanks so that's pretty cool we have an elemental bulwark tank bro a shield and a weapon and going in there with the earth shocks the lightning bolts the storm strikes right and just dominating with elemental force on a dwarf by the way in vanilla as well it was extremely fun to play and i do highly recommend the shaman so my friends a massive update has occurred as you guys know now and that is that you can tank on priest tank on shaman and tank on rogue now in a way in which you can actually queue for it and you don't have to go through a headache of forming the group yourself when all of the other tanks can just queue up like normal you can actually commit and do what you want to do here i think that's a massive deal super fun extremely flavorful Massive shout out once again to Lawbringer in my Discord for being smart enough to figure this out, create a funny guide using Pepe memes, which are just high class memes, okay? And then big shout out to Nox just for being open minded enough to listen to him. I mean, you know, guys, if you look over at this, you can see the messages I got. I actually didn't see this until I saw that he messaged me in my Discord, so it's really good that he contacted me in both ways. But I was looking through this. He has his guide, he has his initial messages as far back as March 30th, so four ish days ago. And he says, yo, McDoubles, I figured it out, and he shows that he could do it on his client side, right? And just Q tank on his DH, which looks pretty good, by the way. He has two trinkets actually from uh, M plus, I think, right there, but that's not even the point. The point is, I don't see this message, or else I would have replied, because this is insane. Then, he sends me another one. He says, hey, I got an answer from the devs, and this is what they said. And again, I just want to reiterate, these devs, they don't really have the same abilities that Nox has. They've been hired really doing community service right now, so thank you guys for that, by the way. And they're learning, right? They don't have knowledge sometimes. It's like when I say, hey, the devs told me the launcher is going to come out and they screwed me, right? At the end of the day, I can't make the launcher for you guys. We just have to take it and judge it appropriately as well. Well, Lawbringer basically says, hi, who do I contact if I know how to fix the RDF class role problem? And this was a mistake. Now, before I go really in depth as to why Q-Tip's answer here was a mistake, let me make it clear. It's not personal. Everybody is at a different stage of life. And I really do feel like so many people forget that. You're on the internet. You're 32 years old or some shit, a freaking 18 or a 19 year old, or even a 40 year old who's on a slower path than you. They say some stuff and you can't even imagine, you don't even think about the fact that they are literally you four years ago. And you just don't even think about it. You forgot where you came from. If there's one thing I will say, my grandfather, who I wish you guys could know, honestly, because he's taught me so many important things. He taught me one thing that you guys need to understand if you don't already. And that is this, in all walks of life and everything you do, never forget where you came from. Never Never forget what it used to mean when you were lesser than you are now. It'll give you more compassion, more empathy, make you a kinder and better person. And by the way, it'll make you happier and more at peace at the same time. So I'm only judging this based on the fact that by simply giving you guys what I believe is the correct answer, we can make more people get to this higher point of almost enlightenment quicker rather than having people respond like this. And basically it goes a little like this. Q-Tip says, it's not a lack of knowledge of how to fix it. Nox does not currently intend to change it in the near future. And 
And this is a mistake because it is actually, it turns out, a lack of knowledge that prevented Nox from fixing it. So why pigeonhole yourself into something where you can be clearly wrong about it later on when you could give a response maybe something like this? Let me make it up real quick. If you'd like, I can forward you to Nox and we can see if we can fix this problem together, although I will admit Nox and other devs have looked really in-depth into this and they have come to the conclusion that this is not something that they can get done at this time. Is that really so hard to say? It took me 30 seconds. But instead, they go with the more cocky route and Lawbringer says, okay, is it terms of service to use a self-fix to play an intended role in RDF like Monk, DH, or Shaman Tank? Q-Tip says no with a period and all that. It's like, okay. And then Lawbringer says, thanks, that's all then. And then I get this message from him and he says, lots of people are being turned of the server because they can't queue the roles. And I'll translate that for you. And I've already said this. It basically means this. When you log into a server and you see basic shit not working right, it doesn't matter how good your other stuff is, people will notice that and they will disrespect you. This is why I harped on this in my video that I got a little bit of extra flack for. I mean, I actually had people try to message me, guys, and this is disrespectful. They were like, hey, you should take that video down because you gave an opinion that a small minority of us have decided we don't like and we're gonna make fun of you. I thought, bitch. <laughs> You said that. Ain't nothing but a thing. Uh, but you said bitch though. Like, I'm not even trying to be mean. I'm just saying, I'm thinking like, come on. I would never do that to you because I didn't like what you had to say one time. Don't do that to people. But basically what I was saying back then was if there's a bunch of stupid typos that make you look illiterate, if there are a bunch of minor bugs that make you look incompetent, like your flight point going through a, a freaking mountainside and you're literally under the game now. If there's a bunch of stuff like that, it doesn't matter how good your custom stuff is. You will get disrespect. People will quit. That's why the lag should be a hyper-prioritized problem. The launcher should be a big thing. I've had multiple people, by the way, reach out to me, and I've already forwarded them to Nox, or at least brought them to Nox's attention so that a launcher could be made, by the way. That is also why, if you can't queue for basic roles with custom stuff you've created, that looks really bad. And I've always pushed for this, but I was given the same answer that Lawbringer was given, by the way, although in slightly more depth by different devs, which is something like, it's so tedious, and it's gonna take so long, and it would require so much effort that it's not really on our frame of mind right now and I wish they had just said that because there's more honesty there rather than just basically only saying it to me and it was just a couple devs I don't even think one of them works for them anymore but this is what I mean by we're all on our own path right nobody's meaning to be mean here in my honest opinion it's just this is how they think that you're supposed to handle stuff in a position of power and maybe in five years after some more learning and understanding they'll be a little bit more empathetic and professional in the future and everybody is like this you know everybody's been at these points so you should judge accordingly that's what I I think. Lawbringer handles this like a boss though. He doesn't bitch about it. He's not mad at them. I would have been a little mad if I got a response like that. When you aren't in a position where you can make good things happen, yet you are somebody that can make the good thing happen, that hurts, especially when you're ignored. And I think that's important to keep in mind, which is why when anybody comes to me and they say, hey, I can make something better, I listen and I get them to the people that they need to get to if I can, if I have that power. Because guess what? It's not about me. It's about making the game good for all of us, bro. That is the freaking point. So this chat of a guy, Lawbringer, comes down one more day later, and he says, listen, I made a little guide, and it was a really cute guide, it's beautiful, I showed you guys it at the beginning of the video, honestly, with the Pepe memes and stuff, high respect, if I could be honest with you, um, and this is what shows you something as well, it's like, this dude uses Pepe memes, yet he's this smart, and this shows you, like, the breadth of knowledge of the multiple intelligences of this world, right, it's like, you could be so insane in something, right? You can figure something out that the actual developers for a currently successful server could not figure out so badly, in fact, that they were basically coping on it. And yet, you still use Pepe memes where he has little binoculars. I mean, th this is why you can't judge a book by its cover in any form of life. So basically, I didn't even end up seeing this. I saw what you guys ended up seeing at the beginning of the video where he posted on my Discord. But eventually, as you know, they fixed it. And uh, it was all because of this guy. And if it really wasn't for the fact that they were kind of ignoring him, right? If it wasn't for that ability for us to come together as a community and get this message to Nox and stuff, nothing would have happened. But let's just keep in mind, Nox himself had to be open-minded enough to say, hey, maybe this guy knows what he's talking about. I'm going to look at it. And then within an hour and a half, fixes it based on what this guy said. And I do respect that, by the way. You know, I respect a guy who kind of treats the way they make a video game the way a good politician would treat their uh, country and their constituents, which is something like this. It's not about you. Nobody actually cares about you in that way. They're not thinking to themselves, oh, look at this guy. Nox is the best server developer in the world. Nobody really thinks that. What people think is, how much do you care about the people? 
that are playing your game? And are you going to let your ego go away and just do the right thing? And Nox has done that almost, if not literally, every time. I mean, I'll send him messages based on things that I think would make the game better and that you guys have told me. The dude will just say, you know what? Even though I designed it this way that people are saying is wrong, I'm going to do everything you guys say to make you guys happy and to make my game better. That is respectful. I like that, and I do appreciate it. But again, big shout out to Lawbringer. This is all you, bro. I know some of you guys were trying to say, oh, McDoubles, he always comes through. I didn't have the knowledge to do what Lawbringer did. I'm not smart enough to figure out what Lawbringer figured out yet, at least. At least, I mean, in any way that matters, he figured it out. I was a conduit to get his message to the people that mattered, right? But at the end of the day, it's this, bro, and in, to a lesser degree, the devs themselves, that you know, Nox specifically, for putting it in the game and figuring it out. So you know what? Huge shout out to y'all. And anyway, guys, I think that's it, man. This was an awesome little surprise, guys. I'm still working on my uh, playthrough for Turtle Wow. I'm working on a brand new Dust Haven video right now. But in the meantime, I thought to myself, we have to talk about this. This is nuts, okay? Throw in a little bit of the DDoS shit in there too so you guys know what's going down. But anyway, I hope y'all enjoyed. If you did, make sure to like and sub. Big shout out to the members on my channel. I love and appreciate you guys. Thank you so much just for existing, bro. Especially Sarah Hedberg, who I believe is currently my oldest member of all time. So I don't even know if she watches anymore. All I know is she's still a member. So thank you. I appreciate you. But I'll see all of y'all in the next one. McDoubles out.